Okay, so this evening I'll be playing Castle, the Castle Ravenloft board game, and I'll be going on with Adventure 3. And this one has a couple of noteworthy uh, special adventure rules that we need to that we need to be aware of. So the first one, and I'm not crazy about this at all, <clears throat> but when the heroes cancel an encounter card, the active hero takes one damage. So. So, as if the game isn't hard enough already, <laughs> they add in this extra rule where you take a damage for canceling an encounter. Um, the other thing is that normally you pick out your uh, powers that you're going to have, and that's what you have to work with throughout the game. And when you use one, you flip it over, and that's kind of the end of it, unless something allows you to flip it back over. But in this game, in Adventure 3, we shuffled up our unused power cards, and there's a, there's a way that we, can, that we can draw those later on. So, it says, when a, whenever a hero explores and draws a new dungeon tile with a white arrow, he or she can discard a treasure card to gain a new power. That hero draws the top card of his or her power card deck and adds that power to his or her selected powers for the rest of the adventure. This is an effect of the chaos magic. But otherwise, this adventure is pretty similar to adventure number two, where we start off, we, you know, we enter down, we enter into the dungeon again. I guess we're a glutton for punishment. And we're working our way this time to a to the laboratory inside the dungeon, whereas before you know, we were looking for the for the chapel. This time we're looking for the laboratory. And when we get to the laboratory, uh, if we make it, then, you know, these other things happen. And we'll worry about that when we get there. But it says when you start the adventure, uh, they want you to read the flavor text to, you know, set the mood. In recent days, storms of chaotic magic have swirled out of Castle Ravenloft and wreaked havoc throughout the land of Barovia. The town's council of elders has asked you to enter the castle, discover the cause of this deadly magic, and put a stop to the periodic storms before all of Barovia is destroyed. So everything is shuffled up and we're ready to go. The only thing we have not yet done is, as part of the setup, uh, we draw a treasure item for each one, of our, um, each one of our heroes. So we'll go ahead and do that now. So we'll start by drawing for Arjun since he'll be the first to go. But usually, uh, the way treasure items work, you can assign them to either player. So the first thing we draw is a treasure item, and this allows you to attack each monster on a tile, one tile away from you. And uh, we'll go ahead and just give this to Arjun. And now we'll go back to the treasure pile and draw. That's not an item, so we're going to discard that. Draw again. This is an item. So, Ring of Accuracy, you gain plus one bonus to attack rolls against monsters that are not adjacent to your hero while this item is in play. Honestly, we'll probably just end up discarding that for one of the powers that the uh, Chaos Magic lets us do. So, go ahead and put the Treasure Card deck back. Here's our extra powers that we'll draw from. Uh, tells you to shuffle them up, although shuffling them is kind of weird because, uh, you know, they, they're labeled on the back as to what they are, but I wasn't looking at them when I shuffled them up. So go ahead and discard that there, and we'll start off turn number one with Arjun. And again, there's nothing much you can do at the beginning because there's no traps or anything, so all you can do is move forward and explore. So we'll go ahead and have Arjun explore, and we'll draw a tile. It's going to be a black tile, so that is going to be an encounter that we will not be able to do anything about, obviously, because we haven't got any experience. We'll go ahead and draw a monster for Arjun, and we're starting off the game with a Gargoyle, which is not good. It's definitely one of the tougher monsters in this game to beat. I'd much rather start off with something easier, like a zombie. But it is what it is, so we'll go ahead and place down that Gargoyle, and then we'll have our encounter. So drawing an encounter, and we got a Grey Ooze. So you want to attack the active hero, and plus eight on that attack and if the active hero is hit 
the active hero discards one of their treasure cards at random. We only have one. So let's hope it doesn't hit. So we roll up our dice and let it go. That's a 19. That's definitely going to hit. So that's going to do the full 3 damage. And Arjun will have to discard his one and only... Uh, his one and only item. Yeah. What was this? Any, what was this again? Attack. Yeah, there is no way we could have used this. I was, I was wondering if, if I could have used it before I discarded it. But I can't do that. So that's gone. Uh, we'll discard that. And we'll update our sheet for Arjun. So obviously he didn't need a healing surge to start with. He moved, he did not attack because that's irrelevant in the first turn. Uh, treasure card is irrelevant in the first turn. He did explore, he got a black tile. He put down a gargoyle. There's no blessing or condition. Uh, he did have an encounter. There's no villain. And the monster will be a gargoyle. So we've already done the encounter. Uh, we do need to take away those three hit points for Arjun taking him from 10 down to 7. Just check that one more time. Yeah, three hit points on a miss. All right, so now the gargoyle will activate. If the gargoyle is within a tile, and it is, it moves to the closest hero's tile and attacks each hero on the tile with the whirlwind of claws. So monsters move bone pile to bone pile, so we'll move that one from there to here and he's going to attack just Arjun because Alyssa is still back here on that tile. Gets a plus eight on that attack and hit uh, hit or miss it does some damage so let's just hope it misses. So we roll for the gargoyle and that's a 10. I think that's going to be a hit because what was the plus on that? Plus eight so yeah that's going to hit Arjun's 17 so it's going to do two more damage and he's going to be slowed so we'll grab one of our slow tokens put it on Arjun so that we can remember that he is slowed and that's going to be the end of Arjun's turn but let's update for Arjun so Arjun took two more damage so that brings him all the way down to five not a good start to the game and he is now slowed until the end of his next hero phase Okay, so Alyssa, is, it's going to be Alyssa's turn, and don't really know what she's going to do, but let's see here. Uh, she gains plus one bonus to attack rolls against monsters that are not adjacent. Yeah, I don't see that really ever happening for her. Um, about the only time that would ever be used would be with this card here. But, uh, let's see, she can attack one adjacent monster she can possibly kill it but she only has a plus six on that attack and she has to roll a 10 or higher don't have a whole lot of confidence in that happening but let's give that a try let's give hit and run a try so we're going to have a listen move up become adjacent to the gargoyle so we'll just have her move here should be fine and she's going to attack with a plus six so let's hope she gets at least a 10. And as usual, when the monsters roll, we roll high. And when we roll for ourselves, we roll low. So that's just going to be a miss. Okay, so let's update for Alyssa. So no surge. She moved. She did attack. She didn't hit anything, so she doesn't get a treasure card. And she will be exploring. So we'll go ahead and draw the next dungeon tile. And it's going to be a white dungeon tile, so we may investigate in this uh, discarding our treasure item. So let me read over that again. Whenever a hero explores and draws a new dungeon tile with a white arrow, he or she can discard a treasure card to gain new power. The hero draws the top card of his or her power card deck and adds that power to his or her selected powers for the rest of the adventure. And we're going to do that because for Alyssa, this um, plus one on attack rolls to non-adjacent monsters is not very good. So we're going to discard that, and she's going to draw one of her new powers. And, and again, one of the things about these is 
you know, you can, you really have to just blindly shuffle them because otherwise you could potentially, you know, put them in a certain order based on whether it's a daily power, utility power, or whatever. But again, I was not looking at them when I shuffled them. So she's going to get another at will power, which is a hunter shot attack one monster within two tiles of you. It, well, now that could <laughs> come in handy, but um, nevertheless, I think that'll be more useful than that treasure item would have been. Okay, so we need to draw a, uh, a monster. So out comes a monster. It's going to be a blazing skeleton. We're getting the really tough monsters out. I think the I think the wraith is probably the the worst, and then I think the blazing skeleton might be the second worst, and the gargoyle maybe the third. And the gargoyle, the only thing about it that doesn't make it so so terrible is that if you can get away from it, it'll just sit there the entire game and do nothing. All right, so she got a white tile. We placed a monster, which was a blazing skeleton. She has no blessings or conditions. She did not get an encounter. The villain is not out yet. And her first monster is going to be a Blazing Skeleton, which we'll activate right now. So if the Blazing Skeleton is within one tile of a hero, and it is, it attacks each hero on the closest tile. So both of them are going to get poked at. And both of them are going to take damage no matter what. Uh, boy, based on the way this game is starting, I don't think it's going to go very long before we're dead. But let's get... Take our dice, we're going to roll for Alyssa because it's her turn. And that's going to be a 12 plus 7, which is 19, so that's definitely going to hit. We could use this ability. Nope, we can't use that ability because we're not adjacent, so we're taking that. Uh, two points, bringing us down to 6. And now we're going to roll to see if Arjun gets hit by the Blazing Skeleton. And Arjun also gets hit because that's a 12, and that plus 7 is going to be a 19, so that's going to hit Arjun as well. And Arjun is uh, pretty close to being dead, and that's going, I mean, and that's just the end of the first turn. Wow, not a good start to the game.